During this segment of our course, we will disassemble the electric motor we showed you during the last segment. Now you'll see how all of the parts we showed you fit together. First assemble the required tools, equipment, and supplies for the job. Having everything ready before you begin will save you time and effort later. Your personal protective equipment is also very important. Wear it at all times to protect yourself in case of an accident. You should now be ready to disassemble the motor. Here's a helpful hint which could prevent some real headaches later on. Match mark the parts as the workman is doing here with the end plate. It will also help later when you will be reinstalling and aligning this end bell. Match marking will do what your memory may not, prevent mistakes during reassembly. A good memory is a great thing, but you can't always depend on it when there are many parts to keep track of. Your first actual step in the disassembly of the motor is to remove the coupling from the shaft. Other motors could be equipped with a pulley or even a gear instead of a coupling. The workman has installed a coupling puller on the end of the shaft to remove the coupling half. Don't forget to place a strip of copper or other soft material between the puller and the end of the shaft to protect the shaft center. Then remove the coupling half from the shaft with the puller as shown. Don't forget to remove the key from the shaft once you've completed pulling the coupling half. The next step in the disassembly process is to remove these long bolts from the motor housing. These bolts actually secure the fan housing to the motor housing. As you can see here, on this particular motor, four of these bolts must be removed. Then the fan housing may be removed. As you can see, the fan on the outboard end of the motor has been exposed. To remove the fan, you must first loosen these bolts, which clamp it to the motor shaft. Then open the fan bore slightly by prying it open with a wedge, as shown here. It's then a simple matter to slide the fan off the shaft, like this. Don't forget the fan to shaft key, which still remains in the shaft. Make sure you don't lose it. Now the workman removes the six bolts from this end plate on the outboard end of the motor. As you may remember, the three outer bolts seat in the end bell, and the three inner bolts fasten to the bearing cartridge through the retainer. After all of the bolts have been removed, slide the end plate off the shaft. Then remove the bolts which secure the end bell to the motor housing. In some cases, it may be necessary to use jack bolts to break the end bells loose from the motor housing as the workman is doing here. Tapped holes are provided in the end bell for this purpose. Once the end bell is loose, slide it off very carefully and place it to one side. Be especially careful not to damage the windings as you do so. By removing the end bell, we have exposed the outboard bearing cartridge and the bearing retainer, as shown here. We'll disassemble them later in this segment. First, we repeat our disassembly on the inboard end of the motor. The workman first unbolts and removes the end plate. Then removes the inboard end bell from the motor, like this. As you can see, the procedure for disassembly was practically identical for both ends of the motor once the fan and fan housing were removed on the outboard end. The next step will be to remove the rotor assembly from the motor housing. This must be done very carefully since the full weight of the rotor assembly is now resting on the stator. Dragging the rotor out could damage the windings of the stator or the rotor. Another workman is helping to remove the rotor assembly, with both men being very careful not to scrape the rotor on the stator any more than absolutely necessary.
Once it has been removed, it's considered good practice to lay the rotor on a soft surface, such as this rag, to prevent it from being damaged. And don't forget to block the rotor to keep it from rolling off the table. The next step in the disassembly process is to remove the screws from the bearing retainer, as shown. Then slide the retainer off the end of the shaft. Since the retainer is no longer holding it in position, the bearing cartridge may now be pushed back off the bearing, as shown here. Now the workman removes the bearing from the shaft with a bearing puller. You may use whatever method is preferred at your plant, but don't forget to protect the shaft center with a piece of copper or other soft material. Once the bearing has been removed, don't forget to label it according to its position in the motor. This is a very important step in the disassembly process. The last part to be removed on the inboard end of the shaft is the bearing cartridge, which simply slides off as shown. Don't forget to tag the cartridge to record its position. The procedure is now repeated for the opposite end of the shaft, the outboard end. First, remove the bearing retainer. Then, push the cartridge back off the bearing. Remove the bearing from the shaft. And the final step is to slide the bearing cartridge itself off the shaft as shown. That completes the disassembly of our electric motor. As you have seen, the process is relatively simple compared to much of the equipment now in use at your plant. However, larger versions of the motor we have shown may not be quite as simple. Some rotors are very large and very heavy, requiring the use of cranes or hoists to remove the end bells and the rotor. Another factor that may complicate things is the enclosure. It may be necessary to take the enclosure apart before you can get to the motor itself. However, there are two basic sources of information which should be of a tremendous help if you encounter problems. The first is the manufacturer's manual. It should have cutaway drawings of the motor you're working with, and it may even have tips on disassembly. The second source of information is your supervisor or other workmen who already have experience in this field. There is no better source of information than those who have done the same job before you. We have some questions for you now on the disassembly of an electric motor. You'll find them in exercise number two in your workbook.